comes to requirements management tools, you need to be able to both build your requirements and move them into iterations so that they can be worked on. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can move requirements from your backlog into a specific iteration and what the workflow looks like for your developers interacting with those requirements. So the workflow starts in our backlog where we're going to map individual requirements into an individual iteration. So how do we do this? Well, we go to our view uh, options here and we choose planning for our right hand panel. Planning is going to allow us to grab certain requirements and drag them into an individual iteration. For instance, if I grab 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I move them into Sprint 2, we'll see that I'm able to move these into an individual iteration. And you may have noticed we went from 10 work items in Sprint 1 to 5 in each. And work item can only be in one iteration at a time. Let's go to Sprint 1 and find our remaining work items that are in this current Sprint. We can see that our dates are set, so with our work items in the iteration, they're ready to be worked on. So how do our developers come in and interact with our requirements? They can interact with our requirements by going into a work item and breaking them down into individual tasks, but commonly, Teams developers will work from the task board. Here in the task board, developers are able to see the requirements, and they can group these requirements in two different ways. They can group requirements by looking at the work items that need to get finished, or group the requirements by people so they can see what is assigned to them. I'm going to leave this on backlog items, and I'm going to talk about the functions that are available for these individual tiles and how developers will turn these requirements into tasks. We can go ahead and assign this individual requirement to an individual. We can also go ahead and change the state of this requirement to something that we want it to reflect, maybe approved. We can adjust what shows up on these individual cards using the options panel here, where we can see the different fields that are going to be shown on each individual card, and we can customize this by adding fields. We'll leave our fields as they are now, and let's discuss how a developer starts breaking this requirement into tasks. A developer will come over to a requirement and they'll open up that individual requirement before creating a task. This will allow them to see what needs to get done. A developer will then close this requirement and click the plus button beside it. Here they'll be able to build a task. We'll call this task 1. And when we open task 1 up, we can see that it is of type task and your developer will use this task to show how that individual requirement is going to get done. From the cards view, your developers can go ahead and assign the individual tasks to whoever, and they can also add an effort to this individual task. Let's set an effort of 2, and we'll create a new task. We'll call this task 2. We don't need to assign it to somebody, although we could, but let's go ahead and assign an effort of 3. We can see that the efforts that we assign to each of these individual task work items is going to roll up to the work item they're related to. Now if we want to assign bugs to this task board as well, we can see here that right now we can only create tasks. It doesn't give us the option for bugs. So we can go into our options here, and we can also turn on bugs at this level. So we'll go to working with bugs, and we'll say that our bugs are managed with tasks. And we'll hit save, and this will now allow us to also create our bugs here in the task board. Now we can go ahead and assign our bugs to whoever we want, and we can also move them through the life cycles that are relevant to an individual bug. When your developers are building out tasks, which is how this requirement is going to be achieved, they'll often want to link their code uh, to the actual task itself. So how does a developer add their development tasks to the individual task itself? Well, they go into the task, and they'll go under the development tab and add a link to their individual branch, or to their GitHub commits, or even to pull requests. This allows your developers to tie their code work directly into the requirements lifecycle. If your developer would also like to add test cases to an individual requirement, they can open up a requirement, go to the Links tab, 
and add a new test case for this individual product backlog item. When they add a test case, they can also go ahead and assign that test case to the BA, so the BA will be notified that the test case has been created and will therefore know to come in and review the test case for the development team.